so this right here is the Gamma of Swarm. So you can get it in 177 caliber or 22. I bought mine at Walmart for $179. So the good news is you can go down to any Walmart and buy this gun and you can have it right now. Uh, if you don't have a Walmart, the other good news is you can order it from Pyramid Air anytime you want to. What makes this gun so special is uh, this right here is where the magazine goes. Basically, you load your magazine up, you load 10 shots in here, and then all you got to do is uh, break the barrel on this baby, and you're ready for your next shot. This is 1,300 feet per second in 177 caliber and 975 feet per second in 22 caliber. All right, this right here is the uh, Whisper Quiet suppression technologies right there. And, you know, it could have some baffles right here, too. This is a shroud that goes over the 19.9-inch barrels. And right here is where you load your magazine from the top right there. And we got a mag release button right there. This is lighter than your normal gun, but it does weigh 6 pounds, so it's not super light. Now, one of the cool things about this is the trigger. And here's a close-up of the trigger. So this trigger is adjustable at two different stages. And you have to read your owner's manual to find out how exactly to do that. It's going to come set on your gun at 3.1 pounds. Of course, we've got some snazzy stuff down here at the end with the red. And this recoil pad is set on the stats was supposed to reduce the recoil by 74%. So this is a 40 millimeter, 30 by 9 power adjustable. And it's adjusted to be really clear at 25 yards. Right here looks like it has a really nice uh, scope rings. That's like one piece. And then it also raises your scope up a little bit. So... That, on top of this rail that they got back there, you're going to have a really nice side picture that's up where you need it. Yeah, this is all gnarled and everything. This part looks really cool. This is metal. All complete metal, of course. And this is where you adjust it. So, yeah, this is great. Okay, guys, right here is my uh, brand new Gamma Swarm. And I got this at Walmart. The barrel looked pretty clean, but some guy told me that he didn't clean the barrel in his Gamma Swarm before he shot it and uh, it caused some problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run some patches through this. So this is super important with air guns and this is something I didn't know when I had my first air gun. You cannot use a metal cleaning rod to clean your air gun. And that's because a lot of air guns have a crown which is basically a little indentation at the very end of your rifling right there. And when you shove a metal rod down the barrel, it screws it all up. So what you gotta do is you gotta get one of these crown savers and this is basically a uh, nylon thing where you can get your patch in here, run it down and pull it through and back and all that stuff without damaging your rifle. The boar snake is uh, another flexible cleaning rod, but there is something on the boar snake that screws up air guns. It's got a little piece of metal in there or something, so do not use a boar snake. Really, uh, you can use like a weed trimmer line from your weed whacker or get one of these crown savers. It's only $10 from Mac one air guns. Right here, I'm just going to be using some patches I got from Walmart. These are like two-inch patches. And, of course, a uh, good old standard Hops gun bore cleaner. And uh, if you have never used this stuff, you know, gun cleaning, it's super, super stinky. So I'm outside right now, and, uh, you know, I got a towel that I don't really care about here. But if you use this stuff inside on the kitchen table, you would get in big trouble. So you actually have to pull the end a little bit to where it's right about there. And then you shove it through the barrel. So once it comes out the other end, it looks like I do already have some grease on there. So there was some grease on here. I'll go ahead and put my patch on there. All right, now I like to soak this stuff up. Once again, this stuff is uh, super stinky. And, you know, you might even want to wear rubber gloves if you got them when you're doing this. Because uh, they'll get on your fingers and stink a lot. So I'm just going to dip this right in there, though. Like that. Maybe give it a little tug on the handle right here to kind of cinch that up. All right, I'm ready to pull this through. Here we go. All right, so all this gunk right here was inside the gamo barrel that I got from Walmart. So I'm definitely very lucky that I cleaned it, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep running patches through here until it comes out clean. So for my next patch, I'm going to pull this like that again and just uh, shove it through the same way I had it. Oh, wow. So that's crazy. So... This is how good this stuff cleans, you guys. This is my second patch, and it's almost completely clean. So it's like I just wiped all that crap out of my barrel on the first patch. But I'm going to go ahead and do this a few more times. All right, so these are the three patches, uh, number one, two, and three. So you can see I'm, uh, I'm almost clean here. I'm going to keep running a few more through there, though. I just got done cleaning my Gamma Swarm right here, and it was a chore. I'll tell you that. It probably took me an hour and a half. 
And uh, the main reason is because my crown saver, when we get to about right here, there's baffles in here. And uh, it would start to be a little twisty and I couldn't get it, to, it would just keep hanging up right here. And then when I try to push it this way, it would hang up right here. And uh, But you know, I had to get it clean, so I finally figured out a method where I kind of had this going downhill and used gravity and finally after about an hour and a half I got this thing pristine clean and I'm so glad I cleaned it too because if I would have shot this gun with all that gunk in the barrel um, it would have really screwed up my grouping um, basically if you shoot a gun like that you'll damage the barrel you'll get like six inch groups um, instead of half inch groups so it's a, it is a huge difference now I just gotta pack these babies up and uh, let's get to the range all right guys, I am uh, going out to the air gun shooting range and uh, I just had to get this on tape because it's beautiful. Ooh, tried to crash here. But uh, this is a place, uh, a lake or something. I've never been here, but oh, look at down there. Anyway, I'm going over some water right now and uh, apparently this some guy set up a range here, an air gun shooting range. So a little bit of a drive for me, but uh, I went ahead and did it this morning. It's about in the morning and uh, so far I'm glad I did I've never been here and it's beautiful so this right here is the real attraction of uh, the place that I'm at right now it's a giant lake and way down there there's someone on the water in a boat and this is the bridge that I'm about to drive across right here and then I'm gonna go up into the mountains somewhere over there and that's where the air gun shooting range is so this is a, a really pretty lake though so I thought <clears throat> since I was here I might as well show it to y'all all right i think i found the place and uh it looks pretty cool actually i am right at the front of it so check out this plaque that they made wow that is an air force edge i know that because i almost bought one yesterday yeah it's cool we got some range rules uh definitely i found the air gun range so i'm super happy let's go see what's going on read that later okay good news is it's got some picnic tables for me to sit at Wow, looks like we got targets at uh, all different distances out here. Oh man, they got some cool ones too. And check this out. I was like, what's sitting over here? It's these strings and let's follow the strings. Oh yeah, that's for resetting your target European style. Let's check this out. Oh my gosh, someone has been shooting these air gun targets. Oh my gosh, this is an air gun target. Holy crap. That is awesome. So if I hit it here, it doesn't do anything, but if you hit it here, down it goes. All right, so I'll get my range finder. So we got a, a deer. We got a, uh, a boar. Boy, someone's definitely been shooting air guns at this thing. Oh my gosh, and a zombie. So this is like more real life sort of scenario. Wow. Oh wow, now this is small um, and number five uh, this is actually I was almost gonna order one of these and uh, looks a lot bigger in the picture but yeah this right here is probably eight inches across but uh, this right here oh no they that broke off right there so maybe the better shooter would be doing this side but basically yeah you shoot these guys and then you guys race across one way or another so that's cool I couldn't even guess how many yards I am away. Probably 20 right now. Let's see what else we got. All right, number six. This is my bunny target that I just had in my uh, video. And it looks like they put the kill zone down to half inch here. Cool. All right, right here we have your basic spinner. So this is number seven. Oh, you know what's really cool? Is a... Uh, this is a bee right here. I don't know why he likes it. Don't eat that stuff. This is really cool. I've seen these on a lot of YouTube videos. This is clay right here. So you can take a card, stick it sideways, and then if you were awesome, you could actually shoot the card in half. So I'll probably be trying that with that clay right there. You know what these guys would really appreciate is if I came here and spray painted their targets for them, and next time they show up, everything was all shiny. So uh, probably do that. All right, guys, it's uh, just me in the wilderness with my gamma swarm and uh, a little bit of water because as soon as I got here, I spilled my water. So uh, now I'm stuck up here in uh, 
I don't know, it's probably like 80 something degrees here in the middle of nowhere, but uh, I don't think they have any fresh water. Time to do some gamma swarm accuracy testing. So here's the most important thing when you get a gamma swarm, whether you get it from Pyramid Air or you go and buy it at Walmart, is that you have to clean the barrel first. All right guys, I'm checking the ranges on these boxes out here with my, this is a Halo XL450 rangefinder that I got at Walmart for $99. So it's telling me that these uh, near boxes right here are actually 15 yards away. The ones behind those, I actually didn't check that one, but these ones back here are 45. And this dueling tree way, way in the back right here is 61 yards away. So some sort of weird distances, but I'm going to go ahead and shoot. All right, 25 yards with the Gamma Swarm. I did kind of sight this in at my house, and so uh, I'm actually going to shoot off the bags real quick here and see what I can do. I can't really see my target, so I'm walking down here to make sure I didn't hit it like right in the middle of the bullseye or something. Uh, not even close. So I'm going to work on sighting this in and see how close I can get, and then we'll do the real tests. Oh, yeah, another uh, news flash is that the artillery hold is what a lot of people say you need to use on a spring gun in order to uh, get a good shot. But this is actually like a nitro piston or something. This doesn't have a metal spring in it, so you don't have to use the artillery hold on it. That's one cool thing about the Gamma Swarm. So I'm just gonna uh, go ahead and shoot the way I normally shoot. And uh, I haven't really ever got into the artillery hold or practiced it, although I will in the future. But I'm gonna go ahead and just shoot normally and see what I can do here. Okay, so my first three shots, um, they are all going consistently to the right. And so I'm going to go back and turn my uh, scope hairs and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm actually at 25 yards and uh, this is made for 100 yards. Basically, just like it says, uh, one click is a quarter inch at 100 yards. So you could actually figure out exactly how many clicks you need to go. But uh, the one thing I wanted to show you is that this is a bullet impact. And so we saw that my bullet impacts or my bullets were striking to the right, so I want my bullet impact to come left. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this to the left like that, and uh, I'm just gonna turn it a few clicks, and uh, I'm more like fine-tuning it right now. All right, it's time to load the magazine on the Gamma Swarm right here. So this is a super cool magazine. That's the indicator on the top there, and uh, it says that you're out, you need to load some. So we're just gonna go to the side that does not have that ring on it, right here, the one that says load, and we're gonna drop the pellets in there, just like it says. So today I'm using these uh, Unjin 16 grain air gun pellets and they actually are about twice as heavy as regular ones but they are pretty accurate. Okay so here's my magazine. I'm just going to kind of put it over there a little bit. Drop this guy in there. Okay now when I do the next one it's actually... So it won't actually hold it to the next one until you put one in there and then it kind of just... Uh, it's weird but... It definitely loads easily and it works really good. Once they're in there, this is kind of like a day state magazine, so once they're inside there, um, they're not coming out and they can't fall out of alignment or get maladjusted or anything. So it's a, it's a great magazine. So let's see here. You can see that I got six in here right now. But uh, as you go through them, you know, it uh, tells you how many you got shots you got left. So you just load this up until it says 10. Excellent. So. Yeah, now I see why uh, it works the way it does is because it wants to have the last pellet sitting here ready for you when you put it in the gun. So I got 10 ready to go. So right on top of the rifle right here, you have this really cool positive clicking place that you put your magazine in there. You just get it like that with the 10 going on top there. Look at that. Now you are loaded. And all you got to do is break your barrel to cock it. Okay, now I just loaded a pellet and cocked my gun. You can see I got nine shots left. All right, guys, after I twisted my crosshairs over, um, my very next shot hit right here, so I must have got lucky and got it almost right on. Um, and also, I didn't do anything special. I just shot the gun normally, uh, and, you know, the pellet went where it was supposed to, more or less, and so... Um, I don't think that you're going to have to use any special artillery hold on this gun. I think you just shoot it normally. and um, I also think it's going to be kind of accurate. Let's see here. So uh, as you can see, things aren't going too well. Um, I'm actually experimenting with different holds right now, but um, I'm going to spend about another hour here and see if I can uh, get this thing sighted in. All right, to give the Gamma Swarm a little better chance, I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
size my pellets. This right here is a 4.5 millimeter pellet sizer. And so what you do is you just basically drop your pellet in there, plunge it through. Okay, now I have a pellet that is exactly at 4.5 millimeters. And I don't know if you can see the little silver stripes on there, but it uh, basically sizes your pellet down to exactly 4.5 or whatever size you choose to get your pellet sizer in. I just picked 4.5 because I didn't know much about it. And so far, so far it works great. Oh, and here's a tip. Uh, don't wear your brand new tennis shoes when you go out to the forest because you might get a few stickers in there. So I had a sticker in my shoe and I couldn't concentrate on shooting. Oh man, I wish I could have filmed that because it was awesome. I was actually shooting this with the artillery hold and the scope just flew right off and landed right here. And I'm not lying at all, okay? I'm sitting here shooting this and the scope actually flew off and landed right there. So this could be one of the reasons that it's shooting like crap is because maybe I didn't have my scope tight enough. So good thing I brought some tools. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna zip this back together. Oh, hi little bird. What are you doing? You want some of my sand match? This bird knows what's going on. Oh. Here comes a brave one. Come on, buddy, you can do it. Come on. Yeah, I got some bread for you, buddy. Oh, you. They can really fly with some large pieces of bread. You want one too, buddy? Here you go. That one's definitely not coming up. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, put these uh, where they're supposed to be. There's a little hole in here with a notch. And so I had my scope back here before trying to be tricky. And I just went ahead and put it where it's supposed to be. And I tightened these down properly. And now I actually put this out at 35 yards instead of 25 so now we got 35 yards that's where you traditionally want to sight a you know PCP rifle in but we're gonna go ahead and get this bad boy sighted in there check this out I believe that might be on three power but you're actually no that was on nine power but when you're sighting in a scope you're supposed to sight it in on the highest power I'm gonna go ahead and take some shots on this bad boy and uh, Get some real results now that the scope's tightened down. Get this thing a fair shot here. Okay, now this is uh, 35 yards away, so let me see if I can remember what exactly happened. Uh, it was shooting to this way, and so I kept aiming here and dialing it over, and then I did the same thing right here. I remember it came over exactly one inch for that one. And then, uh, oh yeah, so then I started shooting up here, and uh, I hit, I think, right here when I was aiming right here. I thought that might be luck. So anyway, I ended up uh, dialing it in. And then once I thought I had it really dialed, I took a shot right here just now after I just loaded a new magazine of uh, sized pellets. And so I hit right where I was aiming pretty much. So I'm going to say this gamma swarm is sighted in. I'm going to try and shoot a group in uh, some of these bullseyes that I can be proud of right here. Okay, I'm at 35 yards away exactly, and I'm going to be going for this bullseye. Um, and I'm going to be making a, a couple clicks uh, one way or another with my scope uh, to try to see if I can get it just perfect. Alright guys, I am going to stop right there because I want to quit while I'm ahead. But let's just see how badly I can screw this up. I'll go ahead and keep shooting. But really what I should do is uh, start this field target stuff because I think I'm sighted in. See if I can perforate this bullseye. All right, I want to tell you guys uh, exactly what happened here. So I actually have to concentrate uh, really hard to shoot straight. But um, anyway, I kind of lost focus here and I got a couple of these around here. Um, I don't remember really if these were part of my magazine, but um, anyway, obviously I got that bullseye and then I got one down here and then I got, I, I believe this was two right here. And, uh, you know, and see, these ones that are off are probably going to be a lot me. You know, it could be an actual flyer. But then, so I ended up getting one here and I think three. So basically, we can see that the Gamma Swarm is capable of uh, half-inch groups at 
35 yards. So that's great. That's like on par with any PCP. And so, you know, that's with practice. Someone that knew how to shoot springers better than me or knew how to shoot better than me or would just, uh, if I went ahead and practiced with this gun, if this is my only gun, I practice with it every day, uh, then you could definitely be nailing these little half inch groups at 35 yards on every shot, I bet. So I think I'm ready to go ahead and uh, tackle this field target or whatever we want to call this course right here. Knock down some bunnies and all that with the gamo. Oh man, this guy like needs some paint jobs so bad. So uh, all I have today though is uh, these target spots right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of these Birchwood Casey target spots and stick them on the paddles right here uh, throughout this whole course. So in a couple minutes here, this whole course will have uh, these Birchwood Casey target spots on here. So I won't be able to really see what's around it, but I'll at least be able to see what I'm shooting at. Let's see if I can take out this whole course with the Gamma Swarm. Whoa, check out the carnage down here. Someone's been ripping this place up with BBs. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at all those BBs stuck in the back. Holy camoly. Wow. If those BBs were jewels, I would be rich. We got a deer right here. Let's look at all the jewels in here. You look great, dude. Very handsome. All right, I gave this guy uh, one down there and then a, a little mini for the reset paddle. And you know what? I think this guy needs like one right there in his head. This right here is some spinners and uh, then this little teeny Tic Tac container and some clay right here. These are probably at 50 yards or something like that, something crazy. Those targets right there are really far away. Um, I do remember now they're like 45 yards away. These right here are more like 10 yards. And I am sighted in for 35 yards, which is... Uh, Pretty much that log right there is where my target was at 35. So I got to figure out exactly where to shoot for my 10 yarders right here. So yeah, I just decided to empty the whole clip on this dude and uh, make sure he was dead and you could see, um, you know, that's probably about a nickel or a quarter. And so, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I hit that guy pretty good, reliably. Now I'm going to dump a 10 round meg on this deer right here. So that was just a little too easy. I'm going to go over to this boar right here. Okay guys, I actually hit each one of these spinners. Um, well, I thought I did. I think I hit these like around here somewhere. But uh, I made each one of these go and I definitely hit these bottom ones within one magazine. So by 10 shots, and this is like 47, it's actually 47 yards away, 50 yards away. So um, anyway, that's pretty good. And uh, you know, I never used this rifle before. I never really shot it. That's my like fourth magazine I've had out of here. So uh, I'd say this definitely has some good accuracy to it. 50 yards and so now for my last trick shot I'm gonna do this little Altoids container at 
50 yards away, 47 yards away. So this is the little side. So this is like, yeah, that's a dime right there. I'll see if I can hit this with a gamma swarm. I have seven shots left in my clip. Okay, so you can see where I was aiming um, that little Tic Tac container, just uh, a little bit high I aimed, let me see, I don't know how this is going to focus in there, but I aimed a little bit high on my scope and on the second shot I did nail it, so that was cool. But yeah, that's a long ways away, that's, uh, that's as far as I can zoom in with my camera, but yeah, that's a... Uh, 50 yards away, exactly 47 yards away, so uh, really, really good. I was, I'm very impressed with the Gamma Swarm. You know what, I actually gotta get going because my kitty cat's been home all day alone. But look at this, look at this. This is a 177 caliber pellet that's been stuck into that Altoid container. So that's pretty amazing. All right, well this concludes the Gamma accuracy testing. So you can see I hit this little half inch across Altoid case from 47 yards, so we're just gonna say 50 yards with the Gamma Swarm on my uh, fourth clip of ever shooting that thing. So, um, yeah, awesome. I, I like the Gamma Swarm. I'm gonna say it, it rocks. It's a good uh, spring gun for 200 bucks, definitely. All right, guys, right here is my pet raccoon, Chauncey. Hey, Chauncey. Chauncey. Hey. Anyway, uh, he's uh, as you can see right there. About as big as a craftsman toolbox, and uh, it's gonna say on your Gamma Swarm package that you can shoot a raccoon with it, uh, that it's suitable for that, but definitely not. Do not shoot a raccoon with your Gamma Swarm because it's just gonna uh, definitely not kill it. So, uh, anyway, I just wanted to mention that. Let Chauncey enjoy his dinner here. <laughs>